me Allie. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a beautiful start to your day. I am here today to do another BuzzFeed Tasty Recipes Tested type of video. You all seem to really enjoy the first one that I put up about two weeks ago and I had an absolute blast making it because I got to try out really fun, really funky, and really creative type of food that I otherwise wouldn't have tried out. So if you're interested in watching this video, just stick around. Very quickly, I just wanted to throw out that I did cut all of these recipes in half because I did not want to be wasteful. I will link the actual recipe in the description below if you want to get the full recipe and try these out for yourself. But I did cut them in half because again, I didn't want to be wasteful. If you have any other questions or concerns, just ask them in the comments below. And without further ado, we're gonna get right into this video. To make these pizza pretzels, you're gonna to wanna to start off with some ready to bake pizza crust. I'm just using the store brand one because it is much cheaper. Once you open up your pizza dough, you wanna spread it out on a wax piece of paper and then take a knife and cut out strips of the pizza dough. You want the strips of the pizza dough to be about one to one and a half inches wide. Then you wanna take some mozzarella cheese and put it on the area of the pizza dough strips. Once you have the mozzarella on both of your pizza dough pieces, you wanna pinch them together so that all the mozzarella is left inside. It's kind of like stuffed crust. So I just did this by putting my finger down on the mozzarella to hold it down and then pitching the top together. The pizza dough is very, very sticky so there was no issues with it sticking together whatsoever. On a greased pan, you just wanna take the pizza dough strips and then form them into the shape of a pretzel, which actually was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Once you are happy with the shape, you just wanna take some mozzarella cheese and sprinkle it on top of each of the pizza pretzels that you are going to be making. And the final step to this is to take some pepperoni and to pinch it along the sides. Make sure that you are pinching it around the sides because if not, the pepperoni will just kind of fly off when it starts frying in the oven. And this is what the final product looks like when you take it out of the oven after 15 to 25 minutes of baking. The oven times will vary depending on your oven, but I am really, really impressed with the way that they came out. I think they look perfect. So I am wildly impressed with the way that these came out. They turned out looking like perfect little pizza pretzels. To be honest with you, I thought that they were going to expand in the oven, but they actually held their shape really, really well. 10 for presentation. Let's hope it is a 10 for the taste test. I'm gonna rip it open to see about the cheese. So the cheese isn't really like oozing out, but you can definitely see the cheese in there. And on the side, I have my little pizza sauce dipping sauce. So let's test this out. So good. That's like everything you would want it to be. The cheese definitely hardened a little bit inside. It's not like a mozzarella stick where you like rip it open and the cheese is just gooing out of it. It kind of got hard inside, but you definitely get that strong cheese flavor and these are freaking delicious. I'm gonna go for another one. So to make this mug cake, you want two tablespoons of butter. You also wanna crack open one egg and then you wanna mix it all together so that all the ingredients are incorporated. Once everything is mixed together, you wanna to do about two tablespoons of milk. I'm just using almond milk. Next, you wanna add in about one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Finally, you wanna add in one fourth of a cup of sugar, which seems like a lot of sugar in my personal opinion. After you add in the sugar, you wanna mix it all together. And once it's all incorporated again, you wanna add in a fourth of a cup of flour. And finally, just a little dash of salt. And again, mix it all up until everything is mixed evenly. And that's really all there is to this recipe. It is supposed to be a very simple mug cake. Once you are done mixing all the ingredients together, you wanna to throw it in the microwave on one to two minute intervals until the cake has completely cooked. So this is a epic fail presentation wise for me. It looks disgusting. It doesn't at all look like cake. I have heard very mixed reviews about mug cakes. Some people who can just master them say that they're amazing, and a lot of people say that they're just an epic fail. I mean, I don't know if you can see that. It looks like cake. It's kind of, I don't know, kind of looks squishy. I feel like cake should be like, not bouncy, but anyways, some of the best food looks disgusting and tastes amazing, so let's just hope that this looks terrible, but actually tastes pretty good. It looks so gross. It's like squishy. Cake should not be squishy. It should be like fluffy.
It tastes like a poor excuse for cake. It is definitely really dense. I followed the recipe to a T and it's just like very, very dense. There's absolutely no fluffiness to this at all. It kind of looks like if I dropped it, it would just bounce back up like a little bouncy ball, but it's not terrible. It's really not. If you're in a pinch and you want cake in like a minute and you have all these ingredients, most of these ingredients you have at your house anyways, I guess it would do. I would definitely suggest like putting ice cream or frosting or something on top of it to semi mask the flavor, but it's not all bad. To make this breakfast bread bowl, you're going to want to start off by cracking three eggs into a bowl. You can mix everything together as you go, but I decided to mix all the ingredients together at the very end. So again, you want to crack open three eggs. Then you want to take two tablespoons of milk. Again, I'm using almond milk because milk bothers my stomach really bad. Then you want to add your seasonings. I added salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And the rest is kind of just really fun. You want to add some cheese, but then you really decide what you want to add for your ingredients. I chose some bacon, some cheese and then I cut up some chives. Once I put all the chives in, I took my fork and I mixed it together until everything was incorporated until the eggs were completely beaten. The next step is to take a soft piece of bread and you wanna basically cut a hole in the middle of it. I cut mine in the shape of a square and you wanna pull out the remaining bread. It's kind of like you're doing a bread bowl like you would get from Panera. So then you wanna take your egg mixture, pour it right inside, and I'm surprised how perfectly this worked out. I had just enough egg to fit my bread bowl. Then you wanna place this in the oven and bake it for 35 to 45 minutes. So this recipe I thought was going to be the easiest out of all the recipes that I tried today. In my head I'm thinking, hey, it's just scrambled eggs, you're throwing some extra ingredients into it, cutting open a piece of bread, and then putting the egg mixture into the bread. What can really go wrong? And a lot went wrong. The egg mixture smells amazing and it looks like it's going to taste really well. I'm going to test that out. But the bread itself, as you could tell in that previous clip, is not edible. You would break all of your teeth trying to bite into this. It just got completely hard. It was in the oven for a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. It was supposed to be in the oven for about 30 minutes. It ended up staying in the oven for about 50 minutes to close to an hour because every single time I checked, the eggs were still very runny and nobody wants to eat runny eggs. So in order for the eggs to fully cook, then the bread got very, very hard. I mean, if you can hear this, do you hear that? It's like hard as a rock. So in my personal opinion, the bread is the least of my worries when it comes to this recipe. I want the eggs to taste good, and if the eggs taste really good, I can always just scoop it out and then put it into another piece of bread if I want that whole flavor combination. But let's try out the eggs. They are very, very fluffy. The eggs cooked perfectly. And when you kind of pull it out, some of the cheese kind of oozed out, which is amazing. So let's test this out, and then I'll give you my suggestion if this actually works out. That is a lot of flavor. Dropped it. So the egg mixture is fantastic. So I guess my suggestion would be to make this egg mixture exactly how I made it. Excuse me, I don't wanna talk with my mouth full. To make this egg mixture exactly how I made it in this video and then just spray down some cupcake tins and throw them in the cupcake tins instead. And you can make like little mini egg muffins. That's definitely what I'm going to do next time because of the bread just not working. And the final recipe that I will be testing are cinnamon roll muffins and they just so happen to be my favorite of the video. Spoiler alert, they are freaking fantastic. You're gonna wanna start off with three eggs, then add a fourth of a cup of milk, a fourth of a cup of heavy cream, a tablespoon of vanilla extract, a tablespoon of cinnamon, a fourth of a cup of sugar, and then you wanna mix that all up and set that off to the side. Then you wanna take your cinnamon rolls. You wanna open up your cinnamon roll package and start cutting your cinnamon rolls into little quarter pieces. I just took each cinnamon roll and I cut it diagonal three times and then down the middle once. So I had six pieces for each individual cinnamon roll.
Once all of your cinnamon roll pieces are cut up, you want to take some Pam and spray down a muffin tin. Then you want to take your pieces of cinnamon roll and just throw them into the cupcake tin liners. Well, actually, you're not using liners, you're just throwing it right into the tin. There's really no measurement for this. I just took handfuls of all the cinnamon rolls and threw them in, and then I just kind of covered up all of the random spaces. Next, you wanna take your egg mixture and pour them into the tins. What you wanna do is just put a little tiny bit. If it overflows, it's okay because it ends up just going right back into the tin. And then you wanna place this into the oven and you wanna bake it for about 30 minutes. And this is what the muffins look like when you take them out of the oven. They are absolutely gorgeous and came out Perfect. I'm just topping them off with the icing that I got in the cinnamon roll package. I'm just taking a spoon and drizzling it on top and let's just take a moment to watch that icing melt onto the cinnamon rolls. It is really just everything to me. So these came out amazing. They smell so good. Like my entire house right now smells like cinnamon sugar and I'm not at all upset about this. These remind me a lot of the cinnamon roll cupcakes that I made in my first BuzzFeed Tasty Tested video, which I will link in the description below. These cinnamon roll cupcakes from my previous video were definitely my favorite of the entire video and I have a feeling that these are going to be my favorite of this video. They just smell and look so amazing. And if you remember from my previous video, there is just something about melted icing that just warms all the cracks in my heart. So let's give this a little taste test. I'm pretty sure it's gonna taste amazing, but let's just check it out. It's so good. I, there's no words, it's just amazing. It's everything you want it to be. It's super, super cinnamon. The icing adds a really nice something extra. I feel like I have icing on my chin. Yep, I have icing on my chin. It's just everything you would want out of a cinnamon roll muffin. It just all meshes together. The egg mixture really kind of just pushes it all together and that cinnamon flavor from each of the individual cinnamon roll pieces that we put in there just is, it is hitting the spot right now. Must at any brunch. Definitely do these at any brunch that you are having. These are a must. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. And please thumbs this video on up if you would like to see more BuzzFeed tested videos. These are seriously so much fun for me. I really think that these are like my favorite type of videos to film. So again, if you would like to see more, just give this video a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you enjoy my videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. I would truly appreciate it. And as always, I love you guys so much. I hope that you're having a beautiful day and I will talk to all of you soon. Bye guys.